Okay, time to talk Gaelic Games this week's preview. Joining us to look at the the games involving the Northwest side. I'm delighted to say if the Irish news, uh, Derryman Cahar O'Kane. Cahar, you're welcome to Highland Radio once again. Thanks for having me, Oshin. Uh, I suppose, first of all, Cahar, before we actually look at the games this weekend and the Series 2 of the National League, what did you take out of the matches that, that, that you've seen last week? What stood out for you? I think probably what stood out for a lot of people was uh, was David Clifford and Kerry. Um, you know, to, to rack up 421 is some scoring against any team. Never mind a good a good Galway side. And it was the style of of play that indicated, you know, they've maybe learned that last year was a massive mistake in terms of the way they went. And, and we might see uh, a free-flowing carry again back back to sort of what we expect from them. Um, I suppose all eyes were on on Tyrone Donegal in, in terms of style and what would change and what would happen there, but it ended up being Kerry that sort of stole the show. Um, but there was a fair wee bit of change in Oma as well that, that you would have noticed. And uh, I think a bit of heart for Tyrone, to be honest, um, out, out of that game as much as they nearly feel they would have left it behind and, and, they made mistakes and the red card was obviously very costly, but I think you know, I think they'll have gone away from that, not really caring about two league points and quite content that some of the stuff that they were trying to implement and put in place uh, worked fairly well for them in terms of a first day out because for them, there's no doubt that down the line, the big challenge is, is usurping Donegal and, and finding ways to, to do that. And that's what they've struggled with in the last couple of years. And that's what they're going to need to do more more likely than not if they're going to win Ulster and go on in the knockout championship. So I think they'll have been they'll have been a wee bit heartened by it. From a Donegal point of view, what did you take out of their performance? Yep. Uh, like Was there much to take out of? Probably not an awful pile, to be honest. Like, I mean, Donegal, you kind of got what you expected to get, if you know what I mean. Like, obviously, the biggest thing probably was the sharpness and the freshness and the brilliance of of Murphy. Um, and 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 the flip side of of the positives for Tyrone, and that's a massive negative because they've struggled with him over the last four or five years. They don't really know what to do with him. They had hoped, obviously, that that if Potter Campsey was fully fit and flying, that he would maybe replicate the performance of I think it was twenty seventeen when he when he put a good shackle on on Murphy. But, you know, Hamsey is going well and he just he, he really couldn't cope um with the with the smarts and the and the physicality and the man strength of of Michael Murphy. Like you can you can lift all the weights and, and make yourself massive out of the gym all you like, but Michael Murphy just has, has natural man strength, as the man would call it. Like, and and that's very, very hard to cope with when he has the brain to go along with it. And f- for Tyrone, that'll, that'll be the biggest issue. And for Donegal, that'll be the biggest positive out of the weekend that, you know, these boys still, no matter what they do, they still don't really have anything that can deal with Murphy, especially if he goes inside. He's a big threat for them at times. And I just think that, you know, other than that, you didn't probably learn a pile about Donegal. They looked all right. They looked sharp enough. They, they won the game. They worked it well when they, they had the spare man. They probably were just marginally the better side, but um, I don't think we learned a pile about them. Yep. Will Monaghan this coming weekend have their hands full with Michael Murphy and Donegal and Balba Fay? Do you feel like you're, you watched Monaghan last week in that defeat to Armagh? I did. I did. It was Adam Brewster Park on Sunday and to be honest, yeah, I think one of them will have their hands full with, with Donegal in general. Um, Murphy, like who picks up Michael Murphy at the minute? Connor Boyle was at fullback for Monaghan. You know, some of that rate has become a very good player for them, but he, but he looked sluggish on Sunday. He didn't quite look at the pace of it. He struggled with the pace of the game. Um, their back, their back seven was was strong. Their back seven uh, in terms of personnel they were they were experienced and they were well stacked at the back their front seven was weak um and very inexperienced and very light physically um so you know if that Monon team i would expect at least three if not four of the fellas that came off the bench you know, darren hughes kieran hughes conor mcmanus fenton kelly all come off the bench on Sunday, they had Drew Wiley, Colin Walsh, Jack McCarron, all not togged out, uh, but were there. Um, I would expect at least three or four of them to come into the team. If not, 
if they don't come into the team, I think it'll be a comfortable evening for Donegal, to be honest, uh, on on the basis of what I saw from Monaghan. I, I wouldn't see that Monaghan team troubling Donegal too greatly. Um, but if it's a stronger Monaghan team, if those three or four fellas are back in, well, then we sort of we sort of know what Monaghan Donegal games have been like over the last decade, nearly. Um, that there's there's not often been a, an awful pile to choose between them. So, but no, look. Monon weren't at it. They, they they weren't sharp. They weren't fresh. They didn't look. They looked like a side that was behind. Um, uh, physically, they looked. Um, obviously missing the leaders in attack, and they'd have been disappointed with what they got from a couple of other players as well. And and you know whipped Niall Cairns and Connor McCarthy off at half time, which was interesting, given that they were the only two experienced men they had for me it up. Uh, the rest were all fledglings, like, and uh, those were the two that they whipped up with. Oh, which I thought was, you know, telling in terms of, you know, having no mercy. But, you know, Monaghan, to me, are, are still definitely a wee bit off it. Right. Um, obviously, the other game in, in Division 1 North on, on Saturday sees Armagh against against Tyrone. And Paul Donaghy put on a big shift for Tyrone at the weekend. He's been a, he's been a class find. He, of course, was the Dungannon star last year in, in the championship. How's Armagh going to go about trying to handle him, Cahar? Yep, but like to be honest, Armagh have a couple of options there. Like Armagh aren't too badly off in the in the line of of man marking defenders. I think you know, without having studied in any great depth, I, I would imagine if I was in Kieran McGinney's shoes, I would think of Aidan Forker, um, because he's that kind of a player, and he'll also want to take Donaghy a run. Uh, Forker will will want to make Donaghy test him out and see if he can defend. Forker scored three points from play. On Sunday, two of them coming from full corner, centre half back, wherever he happened to be at the time, he was he was moving about. But um, I think that'll be the the way that Armagh will go, and that's the way that Armagh will go about it. You know, they do they try and put teams on the back foot. Um, they were they weren't brilliant on Sunday. I I would have expected, looking at the two teams in paper, that Armagh would have won that game more comfortably. They were one three to no score up inside eight minutes, and you know. I suppose that's where they have learning to do. Um, I don't think if Donegal had ever gotten that position or Tyrone had ever gotten that position against that Monon team, they would have allowed it to get to the point where it was one eleven apiece with an hour gone and they were playing into a wind. And like, hey, fair play to them, credit to them that they actually went on then and won it and they were the better side. But it just probably indicated what learning Armagh still have to do in Division 1 football. And these are going to be the two real big games for them. They would have eyed up the Monaghan game. They would have felt they had to win it. But Tyrone are a team that have lamped Armagh a couple of times in, in bigger games when they've met them. Donegal obviously lamped them last year in the Ulster semi-final and, and have been you know a fair wee distance ahead of them. Um, so we'll know a lot more about Armagh in two weeks' time than we do at the minute. Yeah, uh, let's move on to Division Three. Derry off to a winning start against Longford. It was a sort of a training day for Rory Gallagher's side down at, at Pierce Park last Sunday. But there's different opposition now to come this weekend, and it's it's set up very very nicely with Fermanagh winning at the weekend. Uh, it is of course Rory Gallagher's native county. They're coming to Celtic Park. They're coming to, to your back door, so they are. Cahar. And as this one's set up really really nicely, so it is. It is. It is. Um... You know the the dairy result in Longford raised a raised a few eyebrows certainly w- within Derry because the Derry hadn't won in Pierce Park in nineteen years. It's not a place that they've enjoyed going. It's not a, a Longford are not a team that they have a good record against. And you know the manner and the margin of the victory was was very very impressive. Um, Derry looked sharp. They looked fit. They looked hungry. They looked to have a wee bit about them in attack. Um, what Longford brought was probably minimal enough, but you know, Derry had had a, a decent result in a challenge game against Monaghan the week before as well, beating Monaghan, and you know just you know quietly sort of chipping along nicely, and will be fancy and really now fancy and getting out of Division Three, given that you know before a ball was kicked you would have said Cavan, um, but Cavan looked lifeless enough against Fermanagh down in Brewster Park and didn't really deserve to win the game. Um, 
for man are coming now to on big on sun or so, sorry Saturday afternoon and. I suppose the biggest thing they're bringing with them is a is a fresh and a rejuvenated Sean Quigley. Uh, like, I mean, he literally physically looks about half the man that he was. Um, he's in the shape of his life. Kicked nine points against Cavan on 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 the weekend, and you know, for Mana have always been the sum of their parts in terms of the you know they tend to maximise their their one to twelve and they're a good side, but they would just badly lack a, a real scoring forward, a real scoring threat and Quigley looks like he might be able to give that to them for the first time in a long time and if they have that then they're a dangerous opposition um, They're not, again they're not a side that Derry is at a handy handy run against and I don't think Derry will get it too handy on Saturday but they do look to be well at themselves Derry at the minute they do look to be motoring well and I would think that they'll, they'll really fancy now a, a jump up out of the league yeah, uh, one other standout tie this coming weekend is Dublin against Kerry. Both sides, of course, went in in Division One South last week. And the big question going into this one is: Can the Clifford brothers star again? Can they do damage to the All Ireland champions? Can they? Absolutely. Um, I suppose David is the more known of the of the two in terms of the Dublin defence and and how they deal with them. Um, they've. Obviously, they, they, in the first All Ireland final in, in twenty nineteen, they tried Johnny Cooper and it didn't work. Cooper ended up sent off, and and for the rest of it, then it was it was Mick Fitzsimmons, which which worked a lot better. So that's what it'll be, uh, presuming Fitzsimmons plays. Um, it'll be it'll be him on Clifford on David Clifford. Uh, what to do with Potty is hard to know, but it's it's as much about the style of the game as anything. Um, how how Kerry approach it, whether they just say look. We're going to have a real cut off Dublin here because, you know, there's been a wee bit of a narrative now. You know, right? So Kerry went and stuffed Galway, scored four twenty one on them. We're we're back to seeing the the real Kerry, and this is the way they're going to play, and and this is how they put it up to Dublin in the in the final in twenty nineteen, which like, isn't strictly true at all. You know, you watch those games back, those those two finals in twenty nineteen, like Kerry Kerry played very very much on the counter attack that day. And and were were brilliant for for long spells of those both games by dropping bodies in and really hitting Dublin on the break. That that was what they did, and so it'll be interesting to see in terms of how Kerry tactically approach it, whether they decide, you know, nearly just to test themselves out defensively and, and allow Dublin space and maybe not go as as deep as that. Um, that that's really what you're looking for on Saturday. The result. You know, Kerry have taken a couple of scalps off Dublin in the league in the last few years, beat them in the league final, beat them in a league game down in Tralee. You know, that they've they have beaten Dublin. Um, so the idea that they really, really need to beat Dublin is kind of lost a wee bit. They don't really, really need to beat Dublin, but what they need is a performance and to see certain things out of the game that that they can take forward into, you know, what looks like an inevitable championship meeting at some point down the lane yeah listen Kerr as always thanks for joining us on, on Highland and this week on our on our GA preview and uh, enjoy the matches you're attending at the weekend good man Oshin thanks